Before I leave you with Melissa and Jean, <laughs> two of, of our extraordinary young people who will be our MCs today, they spoke last year as keynote. Now they come back as MC. And they're awesome. Um, I just want to let you know that at your tables, you, have, you will see stand with QR codes, which will take you to our online donation page. And for those of you who are not technically, technically savvy like me, or do not want to, to do that, if you want, Adoin, you can go to the registration table and the staff will help you with iPads. I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for allowing me to have the job that I don't think anyone has. I love the kids, I love the staff, I love all of you. Thank you for making our work possible. Thank you, Dr. Diaz. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Jean, and I'm 24 years old. I'm honored to return this morning as your MC alongside Melissa. It's been one year since the last breakfast when I shared how Mount Sinai Adolescent Health Center helped me overcome my fear of the medical system and re-engage with regular primary and sexual health care. Before coming to the center at 16, I'd spent the past few years largely refusing to engage with the health care system except when it was the only way to access gender-affirming care. My avoidance started when I was outed by my first provider and person that I came out to as transgender. The few times I'd been convinced to try again, or was forced to go, um, almost always ended badly. Going into the Mount Sinai Adolescent Health Center, I remember bracing myself for another round of perplexed stares or to be pulled aside and quietly told I was attempting to mutilate God's creation. What happened instead was something truly extraordinary, an experience I hadn't had since I'd come out as transgender, a perfectly ordinary trip to the doctor. There were no co covert stares. I checked in the same way as everyone else. The triage nurse was friendly and welcoming even after seeing that my sex assigned at birth didn't match my gender presentation. My provider understood the needs of people like me. I didn't have to explain anything. Nobody treated me like I was delusional or an exotic specimen. Over the ensuing year, I slowly accepted that I could be entirely honest and still be treated with respect and kindness. I felt safe enough to admit that I was drinking and it was causing problems. I've been able to talk openly about my needs as a survivor of sexual violence and relationship abuse. At no point have I ever felt judged or made to feel like a powerless victim. Even when I slipped up, repeatedly. The focus was on getting me what I needed to get back on my feet, and eventually I did. Not too much has changed since I was here last. I'm now another year sober, seven years in total. My career goal is still to help expand access to high quality, culturally competent care for people who've historically been neglected in the healthcare system. This goal was primarily inspired by my experiences at Mount Sinai Adolescent Health Center. I shared last year that I was applying to medical school Unfortunately, it didn't end up working out, but I've just passed the LSAT and I'm trying for law school. <laughs> In the meantime, I'm lucky enough to still be able to work on the issues that I'm passionate about as a case manager at a congregate housing program for individuals living with HIV and AIDS who've experienced homelessness. This may not be the most dramatic update, but I'm still proud of where I am. I consider stability and normality in the context of most of my adolescence and young adulthood an uh, accomplishment. The Mount Sinai Adolescent Health Center has been vital to helping me get through those difficult parts of my life. They not only convinced me that stability is possible for someone like me, but helped me achieve it. 
Thank you.